The motorsports world is where legends are made. The unthinkable happens and barriers are broken. One man harnesses the power of an industry every week. This is the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor with Jim Beaver. Welcome to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, man, we got uh, got a good show today. We got a lot to talk about. A lot of news coming out of uh, of the motorsports world as we kind of get back to some semblance of uh, normalcy or the new normal, I guess. Um, but a lot on um, you know spectators, events, stuff coming back, some big news uh, coming out of you know most almost every single sanctioning body. So we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about, and not only that, but uh, we are going to shake things up today. Uh, we're going to call in uh, my good friend R.J. Anderson for hour number one here. So uh, uh, he's been pretty uh, pretty dang busy, especially over Memorial Day weekend, having a ton of fun with his new ski jump into the river that he built in Needles, California. So uh, we're going to get uh, all the lowdown on R.J., especially his uh, – Polaris Razor shenanigans uh, with his brother Ronnie up there on Dana Creech's property in California. So, RJ, one of the few that has been busy during this, uh, you know, quarantine pandemic. And uh, we'll talk about that. And then we've also, in hour number two, we got my good friend uh, Tiffany Stone. She's going to be on and, uh, you know, talking uh, all things happening in motorsports. And uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit uh, about what's happening uh, around Detroit and things like that. So, uh, yeah, we've um, we've got a, a fun show with a couple of great guests lined up today. Uh, make sure, and, uh, you know, if you're following along, thanks to everybody for tuning in on uh, Dan Patrick Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 211, Sports Byline, uh, American Forces Network, my website, as well as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that good stuff. If you are uh, an Apple Podcast listener, please go over and uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, leave a rating. Much appreciated. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff happening today. Um, like I said, a lot of current events. If you want uh, to ask any of our guests some questions, or if you've got some questions for me, we do have some time built in today's show where I can get to your fan questions. I know you guys have been piling them in over the past couple of weeks, and uh, I will finally get to answering some of those at some point, probably the start of hour number two today. So uh, looking forward to that. we got some good ones in the pipe, and uh, I can't wait to uh, get those answered right here on air. So, uh, yeah, um, like I said before, R.J. Anderson and Tiffany Stone, we got a lot of motorsports news, some big breaking news coming out of IndyCar. I know X Games has been canceled. We don't have really a lot to talk about on there. Some big, big short course news as well as desert racing news. So uh, we got a lot to cover right here, and we are just getting started. Started today here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hang tight, it's going to be a fun ride today. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all new G Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with the Down and Dirty Radio Show since 2012. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side -side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. 
With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount discount. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome to uh, the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I guess I should say welcome back to the show, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I guess these opening segments, uh, those of you that have been, uh, you know, listeners for years, you, they've kind of turned into uh, me talking about uh, current events, whether it be racing or not, what's going on in my life, what I, what's happened, I don't know, kind of monologues of, uh, so to speak, you know, I don't know, a little bit of everything in these opening opening segments, you know, I just, I like to touch base on um, on just uh, kind of things happening in the world and things like that. Most times it's good times. But right now, I, I, I felt like I, I needed to talk about the situation in Minnesota. One, because, uh, you know, obviously it's a big, heavy thing happening in the world right now. But uh, two, I mean, uh, we air in Minneapolis and around the state of Minnesota on various AMFM networks. Uh, you know, obviously we're on Sirius XM. And then not only that, but uh, Minnesota, it's a place that's near and dear to my heart. I spend a ton of time there up on the lake every summer. Uh, I've got uh, uh, a massive amount of friends uh, in and around, uh, you know, the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, as well as the entire state. Um, You know, it's, you know, that state for action motorsports has played such an integral part. Not only do they annually have Supercross races there and outdoor motocross, I mean, you know, snow, it's the home of Snowcross. They've got some amazing events uh, in the Snowcross series there. Uh, the one at Canterbury is one of the biggest of the year. Obviously, X Games is mini- in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, they've got ERX. You know, they've got UTVs, the home of Polaris. Um, you know, UTV racing. Uh, you know, it's just it's snowmobile racing. I mean, you know, obviously, even Brainerd, they've got uh, NHRA drag races there, uh, things like that. You know, it's, it truly is uh, an action and motorsports mecca. And uh, I don't say that lightly, you know, and, and so it's actually, you know, it's been a big part of, uh, of my life, especially the last decade um, with, with radio and, and working in motorsports and things like that, you know, and uh, man, it's just what's happening right now and, and seeing a city that I absolutely love and adore, one of my favorite places to visit, Minneapolis, uh, just being torn to the ground right now. It, it just, it, it truly does break my heart. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I, I just, I, I guess part of me, I get it, but then I don't get it, you know, and, and I understand. I mean, um, things that happened with uh, George Floyd, I mean, it, it was horrid. Those videos hurt to watch. And, and I don't think it's just me. I think it's everybody in this country. I think this is one of those unique moments in the United States where everybody was together in solidarity. I don't know of one person who didn't, who, who didn't feel the way I feel. You know, and we've had some moments throughout our country's time. I mean, 9-11 was another one um, where everybody, regardless of, you know, race, creed, orientation, uh, religion, wh- whatever, you know, we, we all stood together. And, uh, you know, and that lasted about 24 hours and then riots broke out and things like that. And, I just, my heart goes out to everybody, um, you know, in that area and everybody affected by this complete tragedy of George Floyd, you know, and I just, uh, it breaks my heart to see an entire city ripped to the ground because, you know, while I didn't know Mr. Floyd, I got to think that he wouldn't want to see things happen, you know, and you see police departments being burned to the ground, 
and targets and stuff being looted and, um, you know, and businesses and, and livelihoods ruined. I mean, if this COVID-19, you know, coronavirus pandemic didn't ruin and destroy enough lives, now all of a sudden we've got this other that is, you know, pulling things even further. And, you know, businesses in that area, it's going to be even harder to recover. And I, I don't know. They, that part of it, I don't get. I, I understand the uh, the lashing out. I just feel like it, it could have been done in a whole lot more constructive way because now I think all the good that could come of this, uh, a lot of it is going to be tarnished by people, uh, you know, seeing the flames and the rubble and things like that. And it just, that part breaks my heart, you know, but uh, um, it's it's been interesting to watch. I think, uh, you know, I, I can't say as we are recording this, things are better than they were, but I'm hoping, uh, you know, the next couple of days things get cleaned up and get, you know, to some semblance of normalcy and, and the rebuilding process can happen. And I hope that the police and officers involved in this are, you know, are, are you know, on trial and justice is served. Um, because I, I think justice definitely deserves to be served in this case. But uh, it's just it, everything about it is tough. But uh, all of my friends, uh, family, um, you know, listeners uh, that are in Minnesota, Minneapolis, St. Paul, or anywhere, anybody in this country being affected by this, like just my heart goes out to you um, because I think uh, we are all on, uh, you know, the same page. So. Um, you know, all that being said, it, it is and it has been an interesting couple of months, you know, and, and obviously I think that had a lot to do with uh, lashing out because there's a lot of pent up aggression and anger for so many different reasons in this country right now. And, and that was something that was also there and everything's just kind of bubbled to the surface at one point in time. And uh, it's just kind of crazy, but it does seem like racing and stick and ball sports are getting back to normal, at least have a plan to get back to normal. And I think that is actually going to be a great thing for this country um, because, you know, I think a lot of us, you know, sitting at home, there's nothing. I mean, live TV, you've got talk shows being done, you know, via Skype and things like that. And, you know, in Zoom, nobody knew know what a Zoom call was until three uh, three months ago. And now all of a sudden, you know, it's commonplace and that's all anybody talks about. You know, so, you know, in that regard, um, I think that uh, everybody is excited to get back to some semblance of, of normalcy. And I, I think, uh, you know, NHL, I just saw they've got a plan to uh, start hockey season um, or finish hockey season. Major League Baseball has a plan in place tentatively to start baseball season. I know there's still some... Uh, give and take and push and pull in regards to salaries and who gets paid what. Uh, motorsports, obviously NASCAR, they are back rolling. Um, that is uh, that is a good thing. They've been running without fans. But it sounds like the state of Texas has said we are going to allow race fans at the Texas events um, and allow 25% capacity on site, which I think is kind of cool, which means IndyCar running next weekend will be the first major motorsports event or sporting event, uh, I believe, globally to have an audience. Now, obviously, there has been others, but they weren't, you know, global brands or companies or things like that. You know, it might be local events, things like that. So uh, I think, uh, you know, as was a couple of weeks ago when the eyes of the world were on NASCAR to see how their race – you know, with all these safety procedures for due to COVID-19, how, how that was uh, put on and the world's eyes were on NASCAR. Now I feel like it's flipped and now the, uh, the world's eyes are going to be on IndyCar and Texas here in a week's time to see, you know, what comes of this event and, and being run in front of fans. I mean, this is something, gosh, who would have thought we'd be excited over 25% capacity crowd at Texas Motor Speedway? Most of the time, that would be catastrophic, and they'd be whacking that event next year off the schedule. Now we're just excited to have anybody in the stands. I mean, wow, has the uh, world and the motorsports landscape changed in a short amount of time? Um, but, uh, you know, as you heard on last week's show, we had a great show last week. Uh, if you haven't, we had Chad Reed talking about Supercross coming back and obviously Supercross uh, getting underway. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, he he uh, was followed by Kelly Crandall, who was a writer for Racer Magazine and a good friend of mine. She was one of the first journalists invited to a NASCAR race, and there's only four. 
for the first race back at Darlington, you know, and getting her feedback and feelings on things and the way she thought things saw things happening. And, and, it, and it's all been positive. And that's one thing I love about motorsports right now is there's a lot of positive coming out of it. You know, obviously we had some negatives with Bubba Wallace, Kyle Larson, some of the other things that happened, you know, um, and, you know, losing sponsors. And, and there has been some negativity in the industry. But I think now that we're back to racing, we get to co- focus on our core competency. Obviously, I think uh, we've built up esports to the point in sim racing where it's not going anywhere. Um, you know, it's going to be around for a long time to come, and rightfully so. It deserves it. Uh, but I think we're all excited to go back to racing. That has a buzz in the industry. That has uh, people's blood flowing again. It's got people excited. Uh, you know, we got a real big opportunity here to uh, see some live sports. I mean, even NASCAR has uh, had some uh, really good TV ratings lately uh, because they're the only thing live, right? And uh, I think at this point, anything live people tune into, and being the fact that uh, motorsports generally has pretty good audiences, we're going to see some uh, some audiences like we've never seen before and some TV ratings that, uh, you know, last year they would have begged to have. Um, you know, so we're, we're not having to fight through the noise anymore. You know, motorsports is uh, it is the noise. So uh, uh, we got a lot of good stuff to come, but uh, we're going to take a short break. R.J. Anderson is going to be up here after the break here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at GSPXTV.com today. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome uh, my Razor teammate, Mr. R.J. Anderson, to the line. R.J., man, I'm trying to think back. It's been, been a while since we've had you on. Yeah, I would say a long time to see as well, man. It's been a while since we got the got to hang out and get into some shenanigans well yeah I'm, I'm trying to even think back like i don't know maybe we ran into each other at the men or something it's been it's been a while though but uh speaking of a shenanigans dude i gotta i gotta ask about the anderson compound what you guys got going up there because <laughs> you know i guess you guys were full of shenanigans up there man that was uh looked pretty pretty wild pretty loose yeah we got a maybe a little out of hand this time if that is such a thing but um yeah, we uh, we've always wanted to build a slip and slide out at our at our river compound, and um, it sounded like a good idea. You know, hey, let's build a slip and slide, no big deal. A couple of days, well, two weeks later, and a bunch of blood, sweat, and tears, we uh, ended up having a pretty gnarly uh, slide and, and quite the um, quite the party at our river house during Memorial Day. So it was I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people saw the stand and go down on social media, and I had people come from every which way, Havasu, Laughlin, to come check out the slide. So it was. It was a pretty sight to see. Yeah, well, and I, I was laughing because you said, like, slip and slide. I'm like, you guys built a damn ski jump, dude. <laughs> let's give <laughs> let's give this thing justice. You're, you're like, very <laughs> modest in the slip and slide. I'm like, no, nah, dude, you built a ski jump, man. Yeah, so, yeah, it was about 40 feet tall from, from where you started, and the jump at the bottom was almost 9 feet tall, to put it into perspective. So uh, Matt McCall from Trick Factory actually built the, built the jump, so he's the one that kind of builds all the – freestyle motocross ramp so it was a serious serious ramp yeah well here's my question to you is is like you were saying like you know that thing debuted and you had a lot of people there and i'm like man i think everybody in the world now wants an invite to the anderson compound but my question is how are you guys monitoring that thing when you're not there because i'm like now everybody knows this thing's on the river like you guys get does it like fold up roll away or what because i gotta think people are trying to do these bomb runs when nobody's there and sneak onto Uh the slide man yeah, no, we actually we took it all apart, and the ramp comes apart, and then um, we 
took all the stairs off the scaffolding and bolted the scaffolding up so there's no tarp on it um so if you were if you were trying to give it a run right now you'd have some serious rub burn and not end up in the water so um we you know, we take it up took it all apart because yeah just like you said people are crazy these days and they want to they want to have some fun but um yeah we made everyone that, that came up sign some waivers you know just so um didn't end up being their slide that same the ordeal but yeah, we tried, tried to keep it as safe as possible, but sometimes fun and safe don't always go in the same conversation. Yeah, so what, what was the biggest fail of the weekend? There had to been one, like, standout, complete and total fail on the slide. I think I think uh, there's two of us. I think Mason and, and me ended up getting the worst end of the stick, of course. But at some point, I wrote a floatable, a floaty cell phone down five wide with some of my buddies, Ronnie, um, Doug Matag, a couple other of my buddies. And we hit the bottom of the ramp so hard that we all fell off to the side. And one of the guys' weight landed on my ankle and just totally blew out my heel. So my fun was over pretty quick on the slide. And I'm still walking around with a limp trying to get my heel, heel to recover. So, um, yeah, I, there, was a, there was a couple of fails. I think one of my buddies came up from Havasu and hit it on a bike and did a double backflip. So that was probably the most successful jump of the weekend. But, yeah, we had... We had all kinds of, of trials and errors. It was it was pretty good. Yeah, well, and, you know, all this is going on, and obviously, you know, right now we should be talking about short course season and things like that, and obviously we're not talking about that because this whole pandemic going on. But I know I was talking with somebody the other day, and um, you know, there's been some people stay busy during this. I think I've stayed pretty busy. I mean, you and Ronnie definitely have, you know, and there's a few others, you know, and um, but uh, you guys dropped this video. I know, you know, we've got a mutual friend, Dana Creech, and Dana's been trying to get me up to his his property forever, and I just haven't made it up there. And it, it's always looked amazing. And he texts me pictures and things like that. You and Ronnie went up there, filmed your video. Dude, like, that that place I wanted to go to for so long. Now I see you guys there, and I'm like, man, I really have to get up there. I mean, it's just kind of one of those, like, it's one of the only places in the country where you could actually film a video like you did with those rolling hills and the big, like, natural terrain jumps. I mean, that had to have been really fun, man. Yeah, I mean, he honestly built a little wheel. We called it Disneyland on dirt. I mean, it was insane. I think he had 180 acres up there, and it's all just natural rolling terrain hills. And it's just anything can be your landing. You know, you just have to put a lip, a somewhat of a lip in the side of the hill. And, and he's just built the ultimate playground. And it was built for dirt bikes. Uh, you know, Dana Cree, she came from first the quad scene or dirt bike and quad scene. And then he got into some UTV things. And he's been around the OG, OG in this world. And um, obviously involved in the Terracross thing that we did. And, and so he's, he's very talented on everything he does, you know, whether it's, you know, freestyle on a quad or racing dirt bikes or racing razors or building tracks for razors he's really diversified and and he's really talented and i've talked to him forever about going up there but the prime time for up in his place because he's up in northern california is you know he's got to get some rain to get the hills looking that green so kind of march is a sweet spot on you know once the hills are that really bright green but it's not raining enough to have some mud up there so you know how march goes it's the mint 400 it's the opening a short course for me it's it's you know, all everything's starting to go wide open. So I've never been able to link up with him. And this year, with obviously the first round getting canceled and the pandemic hitting, it's like there's a window here. And in about three days, I was able to put a crew together and and head up there for two days of filming. And uh, I just I didn't really have it planned, so I just you know funded it out of my own pocket, knowing that you know we got to get some content out there no matter what. And I'm I'm glad we did. It was it was a haul. He's way, way up there, way in the middle of nowhere, but um, I think the video turned out pretty cool. Yeah, well, I thought it was pretty rad, too. You got the airplane in the mix and everything else. Like, yeah, for, if you guys plan that on only a couple days' notice, like, I got to say, man, I, I, I could only imagine if you had a month to plan that thing out because that, that video was really rad. I like videos like that that's really scenic, you know what I mean? Like, to me, there was just those big, long, flowing hits, drone footage. Like, I don't know, just kind of – it had a different feel than, you know, one of these highlight clip videos or something like that, you know? Yeah. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to give it that high energy, you know, with techno type, you know, go big type feel while we were still had some big hits in there. I wanted that old school free ride motocross feel, you know, where it's like, you know, longer drawn out clips. And I wanted people to look at it and be like, damn, that looks like so much fun. You know, I didn't want people to look at it and be like, holy cow that was a huge jump i wanted people to be like damn i want to go there 
I want to ride, I want to get in my razor and I want to do that, you know? And I was kind of the, um, I was kind of the vibe that, um, we were trying to go for and we just planned it on the drive up there. It was a 10 hour drive. So just kind of talk to the guys on what we wanted to do. And we were listening to songs, you know, in, in the car, trying to plan on what kind of feel we wanted to give it. And to be honest, the airplane was 100% an accident. We were, uh, we were <laughs> there scouting it the, the day we got there and getting ready to film the next day. And one of Dana's buddies just literally buzzed the tower in his plane and we were flagging him down and he landed and we're like, Hey, will you be here tomorrow? And he's like, yeah, I could probably stop by. So we're in the middle of doing a scene and he happened to fly by and it was just, it ended up working perfect. That's awesome. Well, and I, I think, you know, there, there's something with what you said and I, and I completely agree with you. I feel like now you look at content, you look at social, you look at what, you know, XP one K's are, and they've been amazing, you know, that you were a part of and, and Kim block with the Jim Connors and things like that. And it's like, all, it's all this high energy, quick hits, you know, and now everything's set up where you can have these viral 10 second clips, you know, like, you know, and, and they just re air on a loop. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. I feel like we've lost touch with, like you said, like the old school terra firmas and stuff like that, where it was just old flowing, you know, jumps and things like that. And I, I never really looked at it that way, but this does have an old school feel. And I feel like maybe we've lost touch with some of that because I don't think you always have to have these crazy 150 foot hits and you know you're talking freestyle where it's backflips and this and that like i don't know like to me this you know the scenery and and uh you know the i guess the cinematics of something like you just put out you know and, and obviously you know if you had more time it could have even been more refined but i feel like we've lost touch with that you know not not everything has to be like you know what i mean this instant gratification yeah i think you're exactly right you know um like the x room k's and and the Ken Block, Jim Connors, I don't think anyone can even grasp how much money and time goes into those things, you know, the, the pre-planning, the, the production, the post-planning, you know, I mean, we had more money going to scout locations than we, I even put into this last video we did, you know, um, so it's, it's, those videos are so much work, and obviously they turn out great, um, you know, all the, all the agencies do, do great work, Robbie Madison has some great stuff, um, but there's money and stuff into that, it's crazy, and I just wanted something that's like, hey, you know, we're not putting a bunch of money into this, but we just want that good vibe, feel good, you know, like, yeah, we're not setting any records, we're not doing anything that people are, like, blowing their minds, because you can only do that so many times, you know, and I think people see that, that X21K got to that for me, it's like, I did four of them, people are like, okay, what's next, what's next, and I'm like, <laughs> I mean, it's a razor, like, I, we're pushing the boundaries, but you can't just double kick flip and, and 360 and do something crazy every time you know there's a bunch of money that goes into these stunts and time and risk and and uh people want to see it and i and i know they're glued to their phones and so we just wanted to give them something to uh to enjoy and just be like man that's that looks fun yeah well and i think that's you know even talking with ken and you know and, and he got to a point with jim Connor where it was a yearly thing and then it became like a bi-yearly thing and then you know, and, you know, I've talked with him quite a bit and he goes, these things are getting ridiculously hard to do because he's like, you know, we, we've taken over Los Angeles, San Francisco, Dubai. He's like, you know, he's like, what's left? You know, and I think obviously we just saw with him. Now he's got Pastrana who's going to carry the torch at least for a video or, you know, so it gives him a little bit of a breather and let's Trav do his thing. But I, I feel like XP1K is the same thing. And, you know, you talk about like, you know, skateboard videos. Well, those guys, I know how the way that works. They can go and you know, they, they can try kick flip, you know, 30 different times. And, you know, all of a sudden they, they get that one take, you know, where they land it. And that's the, that's the clip that makes the video, you know, you talk, you and mm -hmm. XP1K, you can't try a hit 30 times to get it right, dude. Cause you just can't yard sale 30 <laughs> razors, you know? Uh, you yeah, just, you yeah, know. yeah, exactly. Exactly. The, exactly the truth right there. Yeah. So, you know, that being said, man, I know we're uh, we're supposed to be talking short course. We're going to take a short commercial break. We'll return here with RJ Anderson. We will get to that here on the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. 
if you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world look no further than polaris and their award-winning lineup of razor vehicles whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a razor 170 like me take the entire family out in a razor xp4 1000 on the weekend or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new razor xp 1000 fox edition polaris has you handled take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound, the sound of sport. The sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Rager, Razor. Razor, man, we're, we're doing Ragers now. <laughs> Brett's, Brett Carp's sitting there listening <laughs> we're in going, what the, Rager, we're, Rager. we're Polaris Ragers? Rangers? I don't know. Uh, Razor, but uh, RJ, man, I know uh, normally right now we would uh, we would be talking about short course. I know things kind of getting pushed back. Um I don't know what, what's going on at your guys' shop. I mean, you got to have a bunch of antsy guys. You know, I know what works has kind of gone back a little bit uh, to to running some. I mean, but uh, you know, I know Cranon now just got pushed back, and uh, you know, I know you guys were going to go to June Cranon. That was going to. So I guess like, what are we looking at Reno the end of uh, the end of July? Are you guys going to try and go to ERX or something like that? Yeah, you know, I w- I would love to go to ERX. It's just kind of hard to fit into our schedule, you know. So um. Right now, that is that is our first is the end of July, which is um, Lucas and Reno. So that's still, I mean, from right now, that's basically two months out. So we, uh, we you know, this this break in the beginning was kind of nice. We were we were able to uh, get, get caught up with some stuff around the shop, do some projects that we've been wanting to do, do some a little bit of side work, and and now it's like we were expecting to be back racing right now. You know, it's like okay, we'll we'll deal with it and. I don't think anyone projected it was going to go on, you know, like it has. So I'm kind of in a little bit of a regrouping phase, um, you know, doing a little bit of things just to pass the time. Uh, everyone's kind of going through the same thing. I've actually heard a lot of companies are doing really well through this time. So that's good to hear. But there's also some of my sponsors that aren't doing so well through this time. And uh, it just trickles down, you know. So um, we're getting through. There's not much you can do but put your big boy pants on and keep on keeping on, you know. So we uh, got some – some cool projects in the works um it's obviously based on you know whether the sponsors and, and everyone can keep um fun and fun in the program but uh man it's it's crazy times and, and it's not something you can plan for it's just something that you got to adapt as as the days come you know and that's what we're trying to do right now 
Yeah, well, and talking about that, I mean, you definitely want to want to get rested up because once things resume, man, I mean, I'm looking at uh, – especially talking October and uh, September, but I mean, starting about July, I mean, it, it's a bender, but you know, July, the end of July, August, September, October, even into November, man, it's going to be a grueling three months for us in off-road, whether you're talking desert, UTVs, short course, man, it's like every single weekend, there's some big event. Yeah. And I, I was talking to some promoters and some races and stuff, and they're like, people are starting to get frustrated on like, Oh, I can't believe, I think it's uh, in October, so uh, it's the UTV Trail Hero event, uh, Lucas Oil at Glen Helen, UT World Championship, and Nora, and they're all on the same weekend in October, and a, a racer was being talking to me, and like, I can't believe they all plan on the same weekend, and I'm like, look, this is only going to keep happening. I'm, we're taking four months of not doing anything, and now we got to all book it on top of a schedule that, I don't know about you, Jim, but... My September, October, every year is something every single weekend. Yeah. And now we have to fill four months of doing nothing into those week, into that schedule that we already were jam-packed. So, yeah, like you were saying, this September, October, and now it's going to carry into November is just going to be wide open. Yeah, you know, and, and I there's still a lot of unknowns, too, like with trade shows. I've heard a lot of them getting canceled. Obviously, none in the off-road world had and how, like, social distancing will come into play, especially even, like, stands and things like that. Like, I know Crandon, they were talking about uh, – I was talking with them, and they were talking about, you know, that grass hill. Like, they're going to have to put in rings in the grass, you know, like big white circles, and each family has, like, a big white circle, things like that, you know. And I'm like, I didn't even think about that. But I'm like, you know, even when yeah. we go back to racing, I think it's going to be totally different than what we're used to but i i don't know i i'm probably in the same boat as you though dude i i'm so it's so weird for me to have slept in my own bed for this long straight i'm like i'm ready yeah. to get back on the road you know yep yeah i i think i i think i was home for uh for six or seven weekends last last year so 2019 i was home for six or seven weekends and now to be home for 12 straight is like i don't even know <laughs> you know like it's it's weird to, to get stuff done at my house and and all the little projects are all finished up, you know? And so it's definitely not something I'm used to, but I think everyone's just having to adapt. And, and like you said, we still don't know, you know, um, the trade shows, all that stuff, we have them on our calendars, but I think no one, no one really knows. I know being from California, we're kind of like our own country out here and who knows how we're going to ever open back up, you know? And I know things are probably going to maybe forever be different for us. So it's just one of those things that we're all going to have to adapt and just make the best of it. Yeah. Well, I got to ask, I know uh, your brother's been really into uh, the sim racing and Ronnie's getting like bad fast in a sim rig. I know you built out one for yourself uh, and you told me you're like, oh, I'm going to let the guys in the shop play with it a little bit. You, uh, you, you've you been jumping in the sim at all, uh, trying to trying to get some, some laps in or is this one of those where Ronnie's got a leg up on you and you're like, hell no, I don't want to go to race because Ronnie's going to beat me. <laughs> no one in the shop can even touch Ronnie. So, um, yeah, I still got a, I still got a ways to go, and it, it's one of those things that the sim racing is really cool. Uh, a lot of people really tell me like, oh, it's not realistic, and obviously it's never going to 100% replicate the real thing. But how close it actually is to real life racing is is pretty freaking rad. So um, the guys in the shop enjoy, you know, all the setup, right? So people come in, the UPS man, whatever, like, hey, try to burn a lap, you know, and, and no one can, no one can can believe how hard it actually is to to get around. So um, yeah, at the time, uh, I don't want I enjoy it. I hop on it. Uh, I'm still I'm still not even close to Ronnie. So um, until I can get somewhat close to Ronnie, then maybe I'll bring it home and, and enter some of your guys' races. But for now, I'm just the guy that's out of control in the back. Yeah, well, we've got a, we've got a race that we're working on. And so I've had, uh, you know, Pastrana, Rossi, Biffle, Toby Price has been texting me. And everybody wants to do – they, they love doing the races, but they're like, we don't want to race against the, the off-road kids and the sim kids who are really good. We want to do, like, our own race. They're like, well, you put it on so because they're all probably about the same skill level as you. Like, they enjoy doing it, but they don't want to get their yeah. butt kicked. So we, we got a race yep. we're working on in July, maybe, like, early July, where it's going to be, like, all those guys, you know what I mean? And and it'll be, like, everybody's about the same, same skill level. So we'll get you in on that one, dude. And that way you can just yard sale it with Toby Price and Pastrana and the boys and yeah. just talk trash okay I'm, I'm i'm in for that one yeah I, I, they're probably on the same boat it, it's fun to do but it's hard I mean, you got to put some time in you know ronnie ronnie is like dang this is hard and when the racing thing started 
you know, happened for the Sims. He put some time in and, and um, made it work, you know, with setups and all that stuff. So you so just like anything, if you want to be good at it, you got to put the time in. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, other than that, what, uh, what do you got planned this year? I mean, uh, I, I'm sure you probably got some pretty wild, uh, wild UTV razor builds coming out uh, for, for trade show season. Um, you know, other than that, I mean, I know we've been seeing you in the desert. How's that been going? We're going to see you uh, some more best in the desert rounds this year too. Yeah, so I, yep, I'm I'm teamed up with Adam Lund and a six one hundred with the buzzer, and, and I enjoy doing that. So it's it's fun here. He just texted me yesterday that he's doing a Silver State three hundred. So um, I might go out there and join him for that. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I got some stuff now at the shop. I'm trying to regroup and kind of you know refocus. So I got to make sure things are going good here before I can can jet off and, and do that kind of stuff. So things are going good here. I'll be out at the Silver State with him. If not, um, for sure Vegas Torino um doing that with him so yeah that will still be in the, in the desert a couple of times this year we were talking about doing the 500 and, and i'm bummed now that all this going down and the borders kind of being a little shaky he's never gone to mexico before so he's a little on the fence about taking all his stuff down there so it doesn't look like we'll be racing the 500 unfortunately but i love going down there so i think i might take one of my i'm, I'm building a new pro xt4 um little pre-runner that i was planning on using for the 500 so i might just take it down there um, hang out, watch some racing, eat some tacos, and kind of enjoy it. Yeah, that's uh, – I don't know, man. I, I think a weekend in Mexico right now sounds about good for just about uh, just about anybody. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm with you on that. Yeah, how about your rowdy-ass uh, street truck build you got in the in the shop there? You guys had time to, to wrench on that thing at all? Yeah, so we, we haven't really – in the off-season, we, my guys have got quite a bit done on it, and then um, – when the whole shutdown happened, um, we were still kind of focused on, hey, let's make sure all the race cars are good to go, um, you know, get some, some side work going through the shop to keep, you know, keep the power on in here. But um, now that we're kind of calming down, I think this next month, June, we're going to hit it pretty hard. So uh, hopefully hopefully June, July, we get some really good progress. And uh, I was my goal was to have it done for SEMA, and then all the thrash happens with race season, you're like, oh, you know, this is a long shot. But I think I might be back on track to get it there now, which is pretty exciting. Nice. Well, RJ, man, it's always uh, always a pleasure having you on the show, buddy. I uh, appreciate you taking the time. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, hopefully uh, be safe and, you know, we'll see you out the racetrack. And hopefully, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm here and maybe uh, we got some, some fun stuff happening with Polaris later on this year. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we get to catch up one of those events or something. Yep, sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for the time, Jim. Uh, RJ Anderson, uh, always always fun to have uh, on the show. He's one of those guys where, uh, you know, whether he's got something going on or not, I can always shoot him a text and be like, RJ, man, you want to come on the show today? And he's like, yep, let's do it. Uh, he's always got something fun going on. you got to give him a lot of credit, too. And, and I think people lose sight of this. Like, RJ, he's just in his mid-20s, you know, mid, well, I don't even know his actual age, mid to upper 20s. Um, but what he's been able to accomplish in his short career, I mean, one, his resume is is amazing. You know, now he's got uh, a win at Cranon, a cup win, and, um, you know, obviously championships. And, uh, um, you know, what he's done with XP1Ks and world records and viral video views. I mean, what he's got to his resume and it just his mid-20s is insane. But uh, which has me excited to see what, you know, the next 10 years hold for, for RJ because I, I think it's it's going to be off the chain. But, you know, all that being said, you got to give him a lot of credit what he's been able to uh, uh, accomplish and put together uh, as far as his race program goes and, and things like that. I mean, you know, here here's a guy who's in his young 20s. You want to talk about an entrepreneur and a guy who is uh, – has figured out this motorsports business, which let me tell you, it is not an easy nut to crack. It's very, very tough to get everything figured out. But, uh, um, you know, RJ, there's a bigger conversation there, and maybe that's something for uh, my show Project Action or something like that. Sit RJ down and, and talk the business side because, uh, you know, he's become a marketing, you know, you, you don't want to lose use the term, you know, loosely genius, but he truly has it, uh, you know, at his age. And, you know, just talking through that interview with him and talking about, you know, just that small video he shot up at Dana Creatures and how he had this concept and the idea and wanted to do it more old school free ride moto um, rather than the, these bangers that people put out and highlight reel type things. I mean, you know, that there there's creative minds, you know what I mean? And, and Ken Block is obviously genius when it comes to I mean, that is for, for sure when it comes to things like that, you know. And um, but RJ, I mean, you know, to, to see his one you know, his knowledge of the business and his business sense at this age, you know, it truly is, 
is remarkable and, and being able to uh, you know build and adapt and overcome and, and shift his focus of his business you know what I mean and uh, you know and have his hands in the UTV industry as well as the four-wheel truck industry and and be able to keep everything funded and going and bringing his brother in and running a successful race shop and race program that's hard enough um, you know but now things have expanded and he's almost become like a little mi mini media company um, and it's it truly is uh, um, kind of cool to see what RJ has been able to accomplish, what he's been able to do. And, uh, you know, he's always always a fun interview. And I got to tell you, if you haven't already, if somebody posted on the YouTube comments for RJ. It was uh, um, it was after he dropped this one for their river weekend and it was shenanigans. You need to go to R RJ's YouTube channel, watch this and see the ski jump ramp there, you know, launching inner tubes and bikes off of and things like that into the river. It's crazy. Guys going like 30, 40 feet in the air doing double backflips, things like that. You need to go watch it, but somebody, and I agree, somebody commented in the comments. They're like, he's got like 900 followers and somebody's like, how does this, how does this channel only have, 900 followers at this point like what, what what's going on here why isn't this a, uh over a thousand yet now i don't know i can't tell you maybe there's a lot of lurkers just tuning in and not subscribing but uh rj anderson's channel definitely uh worth the price of admission uh that's for sure uh, definitely go in and check that out and um, give it a subscribe. RJ deserves it. But, uh, um, yeah, speaking of, I do want to give a shout-out to uh, my good friend Mia Chapman. I'm, uh, um, you know, I kind of actually manage her and, and help her out on social media and her race program with sponsorships. She just started a podcast called Mia Chapman's Free-For-All. Make sure you go over to Apple Podcasts, subscribe. You know, it's uh, she's – one of the youngest female Red Bull athletes in the world, youngest one on four wheels, 17 years old, Red Bull athlete, you know, and, and her podcast is going to take you through uh, trials and tribulations of being a professional athlete uh, for Red Bull. And uh, not only that, but, uh, you know, everything that uh, I, I guess a teenage girl goes through. But, uh, yeah, you know, definitely check it out. She talks racing, pop culture, uh, you know, uh, action sports, fun times, and uh, a whole lot more. So check it out. It's Mia Chapman's Free For All. It's over there on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to it and check it out. We had her as a guest a couple weeks back, and she's always fun. Definitely a talker. So make sure and check that out. And uh, speaking of, um, go over to uh, – Go over to iRacing as well. Use the coupon code PR Jim Beaver, and you know what? You're going to get a 50% uh, uh, off bonus, uh, you know, or discount when you sign up for iRacing. So get in the game, go do some virtual racing, and get uh, get a discount there with PR Jim Beaver. All right, we are going to take a short commercial break. We return, wrap things up here on hour number one on the General Tire Down to Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Conditions off the pavement are always changing. So why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Available live online, in syndication on networks across the U.S. And available internationally on the American Forces Network. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back here to the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. And, uh, yeah, wrapping up hour number one here on Dan Patrick Radio, Series XM, Channel 211, Sports Byline Network. And uh, coming up in hour number two, I know you Sirius XM listeners, you're going to have to catch the rest of it on Sports Byline or Apple Podcasts. Um, but, uh, yeah, coming up in hour number two, we, uh, we're going to take some fan questions. Also got Tiffany Stone on the show. Uh, we're going to break down all the latest and greatest in the world of uh, racing and motorsports and news and a whole lot more. So, um, yeah, definitely uh, always a fun time when she's on air. And um, I am looking forward to uh, – Looking forward to hour number two, but uh, hour number one, big thanks to R.J. Anderson for taking the time to uh, call in and, uh, you know, have a good time here on the show. So if you got any questions, those fan questions, you can still get them in. It's at Jim Beaver 15 We will go to uh, our listener nation and uh, 
you know, and, and see uh, see what uh, you guys are up to, what your what your thoughts are, what you're thinking about. Would uh, would love to get your feedback on any and all things, man. Shoot from the hip today. Bring it. Bring the tough questions. I want to answer them, and uh, yeah, see where you guys uh, see see where your heads are at, um, because uh, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot going on in the world right now, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I can chime in on it. So, uh, yeah, we are uh, we are going to uh, take that short break, though. Once again, it's at Jim Beaver 15. Uh, if you got questions for me, Tiffany Stone, uh, or uh, just on just about anything. So, all right. Well, um, we are uh, going to sign off here from hour number one. Hour number two is coming back at you right after this break here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Don't go anywhere. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. We are, uh, I guess, uh, just kicking off hour number two, so thanks to everybody tuning in on Sports Byline, uh, American Forces Network, downanddirtyshow.com and uh apple Podcasts and everywhere else podcast one thank you guys uh, much appreciated so uh you know it, it is funny i i got this thing we're, we'll probably get to dive into more of these but i i love memes and i love instagram accounts right and uh, sometimes there's uh, there's one it's called weird thoughts ig and uh i i've been following it and some just popped up in my feed during the break and i started laughing i said you know the, here's a couple right off the top um that I just had me rolling. It goes, if your New Year's resolution was to eat out less, you're killing it. <laughs> true, true story there, right? We had no choice. And then your parents told you to go to bed early when you were young, not because you were tired, but because they were tired of you, <laughs> which th- there is uh, so, so much truth in that um, that it's not even funny. So maybe we'll get into uh, we'll get into some more of those here after uh, after the break. But uh, uh, yeah, we do have some fan questions coming up and I uh, do want to uh, once again, if you want to get those fan questions in, it's at Jim Beaver 15 on social media. Also, I uh, have uh, Tiffany Stone, I think, earmarked for two segments here in hour number two as well. So she'll be joining the show talking and uh, breaking down everything that's happening in uh, the world of racing and motorsports. And she's up there in Detroit. So we'll see what's uh, happening in uh, the state of Michigan. I uh, heard rumors that uh, I think the UP opened up, which uh, is a good thing for uh, you off-road fans because Bark River coming uh, the first part of August. So I don't know about the lower peninsula, but it sounds like the UP has opened up. Um, so 
maybe uh, maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel for our Michigan uh, listeners in regards to motorsports. So we'll just have to see how, how things shake out. What's kind of weird is it's like Arizona. I'm in Arizona, and things are wide open here. It's like bring it on free-for-all, you know. And uh, as you saw from the Memorial Weekend pictures, if, if you follow anybody from uh, – Arizona or, uh, you know, any of the River Lake accounts, holy crap, there was a ton of people on uh, the river in Parker and in Lake Havasu. I mean, uh, you know, it, it was completely packed, probably the pa- most packed I have ever seen it, uh, which says a lot. People, uh, you know, starting to travel, starting to get out, trying to enjoy the weather, and, uh, um, yeah, we are starting to see it in our state. Meanwhile, you got other states completely still on lockdown, so uh, it, it is kind of an interesting uh, place we're at, uh, you know, right now, but... Uh, yeah, we'll talk more about that after the break. Uh, we got fan questions coming at you and a whole lot more as we return here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Hang tight. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go, so let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, yeah, thanks to uh, thanks to all you guys for. Um Oh, staying with us here into hour number two. I know we got Tiffany Stone coming up after the break, but right now it is going to be, uh, I guess uh, we're going to take some fan questions. And uh, we had uh, one of our first questions came in, and um, it was from uh, Dano in uh, in Texas, and uh, he's wondering about this uh, IndyCar race we mentioned earlier in the uh, – Earlier in the in the show, you know, in Texas, and now you fans, and you know, so I, I guess what what I'm going to tell him is, is I literally just read this on Twitter just a, a few moments ago that Texas has opened it up, and uh, basically sporting events can have 25% capacity. So 
I, I guess technically that doesn't mean that uh, that, that doesn't mean that uh, the Texas race is going to have fans. But I think reading through the lines, if you can, why wouldn't you? Um, you know, I think uh, Texas Motor Speedway obviously is, is probably going to work their butt off uh, here in the next week. How they are going to distribute those tickets, sell those tickets. I'm, I'm assuming people who pre-ordered tickets or pre-bought tickets way back when are going to have first come, first serve. And then after that, maybe they'll open them to the general public. I don't quite know how that is, uh, that is going to happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I, I can't say for certain that there will be fans at Texas Motor Speedway, but I am assuming that they, uh, they are going to have fans and uh, we will see fans in attendance uh, because, you know, the governor of Texas has uh, opened, uh, opened things back up. So sporting events have 25 percent capacity, which truthfully, Texas Motor Speedway holds a ton of people. Uh, it's still a lot, but it's not a lot compared to most uh, most races we would see NASCAR, IndyCar at, especially the road courses at IndyCar and things like Daytona and, and such. So um, it, it should be interesting. Uh, we will monitor that. I guess I'll probably tweet. Um, uh, I'll probably throw up some tweets uh, for you, Dano, that, uh, you know, w- once I find out. So if you want to kind of follow me on social media, I will try and get those uh, that info out as, uh, as soon as possible. Um, Another question rolling in. This is uh, from Julie in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And, uh, man, Julie, uh, you know, be safe out there. But uh, this one came in a week or so ago before all this stuff uh, broke out. But she was wondering about uh, X Games. And, obviously, it's scrapped. And what do I know about the future of X Games? And uh, truth is, uh, well, obviously, it's a major property for ESPN. I mean, X Games isn't going away anytime soon. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it was the right call. Um, still too early. I mean, that, that's in a football stadium, right? Um, that's where the Minnesota Vikings play, U.S. Bank Stadium. It's uh, it's an amazing facility. Everything's packed in there. I mean, you can fit 80,000 people in there. And, and I think it's too early for that. I think that was an amazing call on ESPN's part. It's got to be a tough one for them because they're leaving a lot of money on the table. Um, but, uh, you know, it was, was the right call. But in regards to X Games, I, I haven't heard – uh, anything in regards to the future. I mean, uh, I'm assuming, and everybody else is assuming, I mean, it's probably still going to continue on. Uh, I, I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, you know, I do know uh, Winter X Games. I, I would say Summer X Games is safe next year. Winter X Games, uh, you know, I saw the U.S. Uh, I think it's the U.S. Open of snowboarding uh, that, that happens in 2021. We're talking January, February. I don't know the exact dates. has been canceled. That scares me. That uh, we're we're already canceling, uh, you know, events, uh, you know, in 2021. But uh, that being said, you know, X Games completely different property, and I would think that uh, you know if anybody's going to get it to go, it's going to be ESPN, or at least it gives them enough time to plan on doing some events and doing the filming like they have done, where it's like real snow and things like that, where you know what I mean, where camera people are involved. Like I think there's ways to do action sports without fans. Is it right? Or is it, you know, I don't want to say is it right. Is it, uh, is it what we want? No. But I do think there, there's plenty of time before X Games to possibly, um, possibly, um, you know, get something fixed or, uh, or changed or shifted. You know what I mean in regards to that. So I, I think summer and winter X next year probably safe. But uh, like I said, I got no basis for, for what I'm saying. It's just my, my personal feeling. But, uh, yeah, X Games not going away anytime soon. Guarantee you that. Um, this one comes from Michael in uh, California. He wanted to know what I thought about the skaters, Venice Beach. Uh, he saw my, my tweet. Um, he wanted to know what, uh, what I thought of those and uh, the situation there with the skate parks being filled in. And I know, that, well, that's not a motorsports question, but I do like to talk some action sports. So what do we know? Back-to-back uh, action sports questions. But uh, what do I think of that? I think it's rad. Heck, yeah, do it, you know. I think it was stupid in the first place, you know, that they went in and they filled in all the skate parks with sand to keep skaters and stuff out. Um, you know, I, one thing you will know about skateboarders, um, they like to protect their parks, their skate parks. They like to keep them clean. Um, you know, they don't like sand, rocks, gravel. I've seen skateboarders do some amazing things to protect their parks, to keep them clean, uh, because, you know, it is theirs. They, they, they pride themselves in it. And, you know, that being said, you know, if it goes away, like, you know, they, they can't afford to fix it and getting city governments and funds to get those things repaired. So they do take their skate park seriously. And I think that was a big slap in the face to the skateboard community, all these cities that filled in skate parks with sand. Um, and I do like that, uh, you know, they kind of came and said, no, we're, we're going to take matters into our own hands. They showed up with shovels, buckets. They worked together. And, uh, you know, they cleaned out the skate park so they could go and skate, you know. And, uh, you know, there, there's things I've seen like videos of dirt bikes riding around and remote control cars and lines through the skate parks and, 
you know, trying to make use of the facilities. But, you know, at the end of the day, this was done right now. And uh, I, I'm really happy they did that. I think it's I think it's BS, you know, given, uh, you know, that it's an individual sport. You know, skateboarding, it's not like you're wrestling or it's not like you're uh, touching people, things like that. It's very individualized sport. Social distancing is very, very easy in skateboarding and BMX. Um, I think it's a good outlet for people. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you, you take those skateboarders and you force them out of the skate parks and they're going to go to the schools and they're going to go to the handrails and the business buildings that you don't want them at. So you're, then you're creating a whole other problem because you're creating good kids and making them trespassers and criminals, as you like to say. And I, I don't agree with that. I, I'm one of those skateboarding is not a crime type of guys, but uh, always have been, you know, and always will be. But you know, I think it was just a bad move on uh, on the city governments who decided to do that. Uh, I think social distancing is very, very easy with skateboarding and BMX, and I don't see why you wouldn't want those skate parks open and keep, uh, you know, there's no difference. Boardwalks are open. You can go down the boardwalks on your skateboard. Why can't you go to a skate park on your skateboard? Makes no sense. Dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. So uh, I am, uh, I, I support them wholeheartedly, all the skateboarders that uh, went out and, and put themselves together. And, heck, at the end of the day, they saved the city government a whole lot of money because they don't have to clean it up now, right? They don't even have to clean up their own mistake. Once again, skateboarders cleaning up the mistake of the city government. So uh, <laughs> there you go. I, I, I guess that was, uh, if that was uh, the answer you were wanting to your question, I guess, uh, I, I guess you, uh, you did get it. Um, this one comes from Lake Havasu City, and uh, this comes from uh, Chuck in Lake Havasu City, and he wonder is wondering, uh, you know, if there's any big UTVs planned for uh, later this year, and uh, if you know COVID nineteen has uh, basically affected the launches of the main manufacturers. And uh, I got to tell you, and obviously I'm I'm signed to the Polaris Razor brand. I don't know a whole hell of a lot in regards to what's coming from any manufacturer, especially after COVID-19. I mean, obviously, at some point, Polaris, come fall, generally releases some kind of new unit. Uh, most of the UTV manufacturers, I would assume Can-Am would do the same. Yamaha would refresh their lineup. Honda, you know, Cowie just dropped there, so I don't know if Cowie's going to have anything new this year. But, uh, um, you know, I, I guess the, the truth is I don't know. I know a lot of these companies furloughed employees, things like that. So I'm thinking whatever might have been in the works from them uh, is probably still in the works. I don't see them scrapping any projects. I mean, the UTV and side-by-side industry has become massive. I mean, it's huge, right? Um, you just don't uh, – you, you don't cut – something like that or just go, oh, we're, we're going to quit updating razors. Just like Ford's never going to quit updating the F-150. You know, you, you just do it. You just things get delayed a little bit. So do I know that all these major announcements from UTV manufacturers are going to come this fall and right around sand sports and things like that like they always do? No. I, I uh, Truthfully, I could see those getting pushed back to later in the year, things like that. Do I know of any new units coming? Uh, I can make assumptions. Uh, I would assume both Polaris and Can-Am both probably have new units coming. I think it's time for Yamaha to have something new coming. Um, Honda might do some slight refreshes. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I guarantee there's some upgrades to Can-Am and Polaris both, you know. Um, do I know anything, you know, any specifics? Even if I did, I'm not telling you. Um, but uh, make the assumption that, yeah, at some point, I would say in the next year, everybody's going to have something uh, new or at least refreshed coming to the table. It, it, I just don't know the time frame, and I don't think anybody does. And, yes, yeah, the manufacturers, they probably don't know the time frame either uh, just because, uh, you know, everything's still an unknown, you know. And how do you do a, a launch and a reveal when you can't have anybody there and press there? It's it's kind of a mangled mess right now. So, um, yeah, that, that's about all I know about that. But, uh, man, we got a lot of questions, and I can't get to them because we're up against the time break, and Tiffany Stone's going to be up next. So hang tight here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. We'll be back right after this short break. Conditions off the pavement are always changing. So why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. 
With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the General Tire Town and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome uh, my partner in crime, Tiffany Stone, to the show. Uh, T Stone, I mean, uh, I guess Memorial Day weekend is uh, wrapped up. I know uh, you've been. Uh, I don't know, how are things looking in Michigan? It's been a while since we've had you on air. Obviously, we've been uh, doing some esports and stuff together, but uh, how are things looking in Michigan? I know Arizona. It's like it's like a freaking free for all here. Everybody is uh, pretty much going about their business like nothing has happened the past two months, and uh, I don't know. It's starting to feel a little bit normal. How's how's Michigan looking? Uh, honestly, I wish I could say the same exact thing, but unfortunately it's, it's not like that. I'm, I'm very lucky to have a cabin and it's on a lake. So I kind of spent my time up here the last, like, you know, few months, but really the last like few weeks I've been here. So it's kind of been nice, especially since, like you said, I was able to call some races for you from, you know, the cabin and I was able to do some TV 20 showcases via zoom even. So it was kind of cool for that. But uh, I don't know. I usually don't talk politics uh, or really anything regarding that. But our governor, I don't know what to say or do. She just keeps continually pushing back on, like, I guess I keep calling it our release date. Like, we're getting released from prison or something. But keep pushing it back. You know, at first it was April 12th. Then it was April 28th. Then it was the middle of May. Then it was May 28th. And now um, it's June 12th, I think. And so it just keeps being pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. And it's like, hey, if you would have just told me everything's going to be shut down until July 1st, but if we flatten the curve and things get better, we'll, you know, we'll open things up slowly. But then this past weekend, she opened up Traverse City and the UP. And Traverse City is already um, a, a destination spot for Memorial Weekend. But you have a bunch of Michigan people who have been stuck in their houses. It's going to be 88 degrees over the weekend, and you opened up the UP and Traverse City area. It was it was crazy, but I I just stayed here. Yeah, well, and uh, honestly, I've kind of been following this all, along, and it's funny because, like, I, I don't follow Michigan news. Like, I just don't, you know, outside of uh, Motor City stuff. You know what's happening with you know Chevy Dodge stuff like that, or you know Ford. I, I don't, I don't really pay much attention to Michigan news, but I don't think this is a political thing. And I know you well enough to know. I know your politics. You know what I mean. But we don't, we don't talk about that on air. But, like, I, I got to say, like, this isn't a political thing, T-Stone. Like, I don't know, care if you're left or right. Like, what your governor's doing is just a little bat bleep crazy. Like, it, it's kind of been that way. And, like, we've got some crazy governors in this country, but it seems like Michigan's right now, unfortunately for you, is kind of taking the cake. It's like it's kind of been a little crazy up there. So, I like, I don't know. I will go to bat for you and say what you just said is not political because even people <laughs> e- either direction, I think, disagree with what's going on. No, I honestly, I've said this analogy. I feel like we are the peeing section in the pool right now. Like there is no peeing section really, but we're in the section everybody's peeing in right now. And it's just not getting better. But um, no, and it, it was crazy. Like I went out and paddled this morning. It was beautiful on the lake. I, I talked to this one guy who was fishing out there and he had told me that, uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but told me that Governor Whitmere's uh, daughter was gr- her graduation party was in Traverse City over Memorial Weekend, and that's something to be said. I don't know if that's the whole reason that area was, uh, you know, opened up or whatnot, because there's areas like in Southwest Michigan, Southeast Michigan, like out of the Metro Detroit area that don't have as many confirmed cases or anything like that, just like the Traverse City area and the UP. But why didn't that get closed down? So it was just really weird, and he, and the guy fishing this morning even told me uh, he was saying something about how her husband had called and wanted to get his boat w- um, summarized and put in in the marina over there, and he's like, no, you're at the bottom of the list. He's like, well, my wife's the governor, and he's like, well, then you should know there's a stay-at-home order, you know? So it's just, I don't, like we said, thank you for not saying it's political. You know, I don't really want to get in that, but it's just some things don't add up and it's very frustrating when I see everybody hanging out in Lake Havasu, seeing people hang out in Scottsdale and like Arizona is just having the best time right now. 
Yeah, I will say, like, I went into uh, I, I went in for the first time, went up to Prescott to the mountains for uh, for for Memorial Day. And for the first time in two months, over two months, I had dinner in an actual restaurant twice, two different restaurants. And uh, they were chains. One was Applebee's and one was Red Lobster. But I got to tell you, it felt so damn refreshing to uh, to eat at a place and be served. And they were wearing masks, but like be served. And like everybody was so happy. I think, you know, in talking with the waiters and waitresses, they are just so stoked to have their job because even now, like because it's every other booth is seating and like at the bar, it's every other chair. And things like that. So it's like they so they only need like half the staff. And they're just so excited to be back to work and, and have a job. Like they're given probably the best service of their life. Everybody's smiling, talkative. The restaurants are cleaner than I've ever seen. And that's not to say they're dirty normally, but literally you could probably eat off the floor of these places. And as soon as you get up, they're like scrubbing the booths, things like that. Like, but I gotta say, like, that just little bit of normalcy felt so good and and you know you would think eating in a restaurant that's like to say that's like that's refreshing is kind of weird but i gotta tell you when you haven't done it for two and a half months being served a meal and a beer like that is it's pretty damn nice tiff no i agree honestly what i'm looking forward to more than anything is like eating not having to make it not having to like clean up and not having to do the dishes after, you know, cause uh, you and I, we travel so much. So we are very accustomed to eating out, going to a restaurant, you know, a lot of the times, even if the race weekend is, is late, we'll find something that does have open, you know, we've ate at 1130 at night at times, you know, and it, it's just nice. And I think I took that for granted. I was like, Oh, I don't want to go do this. Oh, I don't want to eat. I just want to sit in my room. And it's just like, now I, all I want to do is go somewhere and eat. Like I'm really missing um, like sitting down and you know, when meals are really, really nice and because they just come right out and they're hot, they're not takeout. It, even if you get a meal that's takeout, it's a little, not the same experience, you know, like I'm not going to get scallops to go. So it's just, I, I don't know. I'm just really looking forward to, to not having to clean up after I eat. Yeah, no. And, that's what's funny too, because I don't mind barbecuing. I mean, I'm a big barbecue guy. Like, yeah, um, you know, I cook on the grill probably four nights a week when I'm home and things like that. But, like, I got to tell you, like, I mean, I think at first everybody was excited. Hey, we get to cook at home, and everybody got creative. And then, like, two months straight of cooking at home, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Like, I think everybody's just like, hell, this. <laughs> <laughs> give me uh, serve me you know what i mean it was just i don't know it's kind of uh kind of weird but no i i completely agree with you on that point i i think probably the good thing that comes out of all this though and we'll get to talking racing here in a minute because we had some big news break just uh, <laughs> a few minutes ago but like i think the takeaway is is like i think when restaurants and and places like events things finally do actually reopen up and everybody can go and go about their normal business i think that the economy is going to come back because i think people are going to be rushing to restaurants and things like that just because they haven't had it in so long you know it's like movies like you know i can't say that i go watch movies in a theater every weekend but now you tell me i can't and it's been three months since i've been to a theater like i'm ready to go watch a damn movie I'm ready to watch a movie on the biggest screen possible, surrounded by hundreds of people. Right? I mean, it's just, it's kind of weird. But speaking of things opening up, we just did have some breaking <laughs> news. We got a uh, couple minutes for break, and then uh, we'll come back after the break. Um, but uh, so it was announced. I got an email. It's starting to circle around on social media. But Crandon, June Crandon has been scrapped. It has been canceled, Tiff. I know that one we were kind of looking forward to. It was like, all right, this is going to be like the, the opening of off-road season again. Yep, er, pump the brakes. Not happening. No, yeah, um, I had seen that floating around on social media, and it's just, it's a little disheartening. I, I, like you said, I, I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to go. You and I were talking about, like, what's going on, Vision Wheel, are they going, what's happening, what's this, what's that, and it's just crazy to see how much everything's shut down. I mean, even UCC, they pushed it back a little bit. Now it was going to be a few weeks after the normal time of it, and now they just pushed it all the way to 2021. So, so many things are just pushing stuff back. And even with the New York Auto Show, the New York Auto Show was postponed to later on over Labor Day weekend. And now that's just canceled and they're just starting to do things. Everybody's just moving towards 2021 now. And I, I really hope that doesn't happen because 
I need some type of form of racing. Like, thankfully, like you said, we were doing some I racing stuff, especially with the E short course. And that just at least gave me some fulfillment of racing. And I didn't realize how much I missed it and missed being around it. And honestly, I would give anything to like smell a pro four right now or a trophy truck or like a side, just something that smells like racial. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, and you know, you talk about 2021 and like what got me nervous is nothing in 2021 has been canceled. Everything's been moved back to 2021. I just saw that uh, I think it's the U S open of snowboarding that happens, you know, obviously after the first of the year, you know what I mean? In 2021, it got canceled yesterday or two days ago. And I'm like, mm, this is like red flags here. We're canceling 2021 events. I mean, next winter, like this is, you know, to me, that's like a little, that's a little nerve wracking. You know, it's like, you know, what do they know that I don't know? Or are they just being very, very overcautious? Or maybe they just don't have any money right now because of this whole thing. Like, I don't know. But when you start seeing 2021 events canceled already, I'm like, ooh, that's that's not good. No, exactly. I'm fortunate enough that some of the events, um, I know 100 Acre Wood for American Rally Association, that is done 100%. It's just going to be go, uh, moved to next, you know, repeat for next year and stuff. But um seeing other things that were changing through there with a new schedule that just came out. It's good to see that they've moved some stuff and then they moved Olympus rally in November now. So November 14th is going to be Olympus rally. And I'm not familiar with that territory. This is probably a little bit more of yours, but how does that change moving Olympus from a spring race to a fall race? Well, and when was that in November? You said, was it November or October? Yeah, no, no, November 14th is Olympus rally this year. All right, so I am going to answer this question uh, when we return here to the show, but we are up against uh, the commercial break. So uh, that question will get answered here when we return from the break here on the General Tire Down to Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max R to the Grabber ATX. No matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with the Down and Dirty Radio Show since 2012. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high octane rush of rally on mud dirt and tarmac get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15 percent discount you're listening to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor all killer and no filler Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And, uh, you know, before we went to the break, uh, Tiffany Stone had asked me a question, and, uh, you know, I was getting ready to dive into it. We had to cut to break. But uh, uh, Olympus Rally on the ARA calendar uh, up there in Washington, it, it's been rescheduled to uh, uh, November 14th. So I think the question was, um, you know, what, uh, what do I think the weather could potentially be like up there? Well, my thought is Seattle – well, it's not in Seattle, but in that area, you know, it depends how close the stages are to the ocean because obviously it's a sea level, you know, ocean. They're not going to get a ton of snow, but you move inland a little ways, and I'm talking a very, very little ways, all of a sudden there's snow. So it's been on the weather in mm -hmm. mid-November. There's potential. There could be some snow on the ground for this one, you know, depending on – and I'm not saying all the stages, but I could see that being really, really interesting, you know. And, I mean, rumor I'm getting, like, you start talking about things like that being moved in November. I mean, I, I, from what I understand from some of my sources, that Spring Cranon, which we all know runs in June, which is kind of like a summer Cranon almost, but the brush run, they're rescheduling that for October. You want to talk about a cold-ass race in mid-October at Cranon. I mean, you know, the first of October, sometimes it starts snowing back there. You know, so I'm like, man, no. this is going to be really interesting <laughs> for some of these motorsports. No, I mean, if that happens, well, what if they move that back in October, what's really going to happen? Because you have UTV World Championship slated to, to take place the 7th through 11th of October in Havasu. 
So is that going to not bring some people who wanted to race both of them? Or is that not going to allow some of the West or the Midwest guys to come out there? Cause you know, you gotta, this is where, what we were talking about earlier, once things start happening and things get moved around in certain dates that they're not normally in, this is, this is when things get stacked on each other and it's like, okay, am I going to do this or am I going to do that? And I think this is where a lot of, you know, drivers, race teams, athletes are really going to have to decide what event or what race they really want to do. Well, and I think Tiff, what, what I find, you know, really interesting about this is that we're in this position now where everybody had their yearly plans, you know, and, and budgets and everything was set. And I feel like, everything's thrown out the window now and we've got like this mid season restart. That's like, sometimes it's not even a mid season. It's actually a new season, but it's starting the middle part of the year. Like we're in this weird thing. It's unknown territory. Like, you know what I mean? Like you said, with schedules, dates, I mean, I start thinking about people like you and I we're on the road a ton already, you know, in a traditional year. Now all of a sudden we've got events upon events upon events and all this overlap, where where are some of these events going to find talent, not just on-air talent like us, but I mean staff, things like that, because a lot of these staff, safety crews, things like that, they work for multiple different sanctioning bodies and organizations. And uh, now when you've got three or four uh, you know races on, on any given weekend, I think we've gone from all of us sitting on our hands for two or three months to a lot of us are going to have an overabundance of work, and I think there's actually going to be short-staffed at some events. No, you're right. And I mean, both of us, we do the on air talent as well as other things you with racing myself with the Jeeps. And, you know, I have events for that are in August, you know, I still do the, the events with trail to SEMA, obviously right before there with SEMA as well. And I know a lot of manufacturers SEMA is a big deal for them. So with them not having a lot of ROI throughout the beginning of the year, I wonder how crazy SEMA actually might be this year. Are companies going to have budgets for that? Are they not going to have? It's like, because I'm still getting registration stuff for SEMA saying that it's open now. So it's just, it's crazy to see where this could go. And, and like you were saying, especially with stuff that's happening with snow and winter sports being pushed to even 2021. Well, and speaking of SEMA, I was wondering, you know, trade shows, I mean, SEMA, Yeah, it's like things are going to be opened back up, but then on the flip side, it's like, gosh, you and I both know how claustrophobic and cramped it is in those halls at SEMA. So are we going to, uh, you know, one, see there's no possible way to socially distance SEMA. Like, it's just not happening. I mean, that's, you know, it's like cramming a bunch of ants in an ant farm or something like that. But um, but not only that, and, you know, I, I see this too. It's very interesting because SEMA has a very large representation of, uh, of the Asian business community and Asian companies. And obviously we know that COVID-19 and coronavirus have hit, you know, those economies very, very hard. So a SEMA, are we going to see some uh, SEMA that's light on uh, the international vendors and the international attendees? Like, I don't know. I mean, SEMA is really a big toss up at this point to me. Like I, I, it, it could either be the biggest SEMA in history or it could be one of the smallest ones we've seen in a long time. I just don't know. No, you're 100 percent right. It, it, it could be it's a, a coin flip, really. All I know, Jim, is like you said, SEMA is cramped. SEMA is busy, especially when you're trying to get to one booth to another. You have 10 minutes and you're in different halls like it's just a nightmare, especially for logistically planning all that. Now, imagine if you had to stay on a square and or X or whatnot and only one could move as you're looking through everything, getting wiped down, doing all that stuff, it would take forever. The the entrance into SEMA, literally, you would probably wait in line for six hours before you ever got into SEMA because that line is long anyways to begin with. And how long are you going to have that? Yeah, that line is going to be ridiculous. So, oh, man, I <laughs> I don't even want to think about SEMA yet, I don't think. That's, uh, I don't know, that's kind of crazy. Gosh, we got so much uh, even before then. I mean, like one of the things we haven't talked about in a while, you know, that got delayed with all this. We've been talking about racing and stuff like that. Obviously, you are uh, um, big going to the auto shows and things like that and working for various brands. But, uh, Tiff, we still haven't seen the Ford Bronco. I mean, this is like one of the most highly anticipated vehicles in history. I mean, this thing's like 20 years in the making, 20 plus years in the making. I mean, last time they made a Bronco was 96, you know, so we're almost 25 years. Maybe that's what they're waiting for is uh, 2021 to make it 25 years. But uh, I'm just looking at it going, man, we still haven't even seen this damn Bronco come, you know, come out. 
what if they do do that? Or <laughs> what? If, remember how we always talk about our conspiracy shows? What if Ford created this so they pushed the Bronco back? <laughs> that would be awful. That would be awful. And no, nobody out there. I do not think that Ford created this. I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm just saying how funny would that be? But it's just, we've, I don't even know what's happening with the Ford Bronco. Like I want to know, but I don't want to know because, I don't know, because I just feel like it's deep. I feel like the Ford Bronco is my governor. Keep saying you're going to come out and it doesn't. Yeah, that's what I, I've said that for a long time. I'm like the Ford Bronco. I'm like, gosh, this thing, this is the most highly built up, teased, everything else vehicle in history. Like the damn thing better deliver. You know, it's like, I, like you said, I, I'll believe it when I see it. And so far, nobody's seen it. I mean, I know there's prototypes. People have seen the prototypes, whatever. But I want to see the production car sitting in front of me pictures online with a list of options when i see that i'll believe it well i seen something uh a friend of mine andrew bailey he was on trail with SEMA with us uh does stuff with marvin spammel a lot he just posted a photo six hours ago from a different person that's showing a production bronco yeah. but i don't know if I, was... I don't know i can send it to you and go from there but yeah, if I was Ford, you know what I'd do at this point with the Bronco? Like, I would make, I would start teasing. Uh, you know, I'd be like, for the next month, I'd put out teasers. On this day, at this time, we're going to go live on Facebook, and we're going to unveil the Bronco. And literally get, like, Ken Block and all these Ford athletes, Haley Deegan, and start cross-posting on Facebook and everything else. And I'd build it up, and I literally would have a viral video moment on Facebook with the reveal of the Bronco and have the world's attention. Like, that's the way I do it. You know what? You're going to get so much more attention than you are dropping at some show and unveiling, and then all the automotive press, you know, writes an article, and, you know, and, and everybody puts the same pictures up. Uh, like, I'd make this viral video moment at this point. Just drop the thing. You know what I mean? Like, you you know, I'd blow it up that way, but that's just me. What do I know? No, uh, you're absolutely right. Based on like things that have happened, why wouldn't you do something like that? Because if you could get everybody to cross post and we're sitting here, everybody's waiting for it. And if you teased it up enough, it, it could be totally possible to do. I mean, there's tons of people who do it anyways. The artists, you know, when they drop new albums. And if you're just going to do a press release without the press being there, you're just doing a, a a conference pretty much like why don't you just have the people in there do what you would have done for your press release have the cameras film it have the production crew just like you would do you know change the different cameras but just have it go live i think that's a brilliant idea yeah well you just call me brilliant i'll take that one and we'll bank that we're gonna trim that out and that'll be the intro to the show brilliant brilliant <laughs> brilliant we're just gonna re-air it on a loop brilliant 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 would it, <laughs> would, would it be better if i did the drop for you Jim Beaver is brilliant. Oh, there you go, Jim. All right, there we go. Perfect. That's perfection. That's going in the next intro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so let's talk a little esports. We got uh, like four or five minutes left to wrap things up. I, I kind of drug you over into this world of esports, and I got to say, like, I'm not exactly like a veteran of esports. I guess at this point, I am. I've been in it about a year and a half, and that's, I guess, probably. Um, probably about 14 months more than most people. But uh, what, 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 you, what are you feeling off this short course race as you, you, myself, and Evan have been calling? I think it's been kind of fun, nice little shakeup. But, uh, like, you had never really been exposed to eSports prior to, um, you know, two months ago or a month ago. What, what, what's your takeaway from eSports? Um, honestly, I think it's awesome. It gives uh, a, all generations, you know, a chance to be able to do it. Not everybody is going to have – a quarter of a million dollars to go build a pro four out there to go build a pro two, you know, to be able to do these things. And not, not saying I, that's how much, you know, they all cost, but throughout the time. And it's really cool because even when Evan says some things, he's like, and these guys don't mind if they flip over. Cause unlike in the real world, all they'll have to do is just restart. And it's like, it's, I think that was a really good Evan, by the way, that was an amazing Evan I just did, but it's just really cool. Cause it is, you know, it gives everybody, you got some great sim drivers out there. And, um, you know, I was just talking to everybody, even if a lot of the, I guess, if you want to call them real world drivers, you know, once racing starts happening and they're not around to do that, I think it's still just put it on the map where other people who didn't know about it would be able to have that. And then that's where you get more pro sim racers. And you, you know, you have the Cam Petersons out there, the Brown, Brandon Proudfoots, you know, and, and you'd be able to have those, those names and just, they have great careers. It's really cool. It's very, very cool. 
Yeah, well, and, you know, I think uh, one of the cool things that I thought you were talking about kind of the crashes and stuff, like you and I have been in the booth when a bad crash happens at a short course race or a motorsports event, and you go silent. Like, you don't know. Like, it, it, there's a lot of unknown, and you're like, oh, man, that was bad. And you sit there, and literally, we're sitting there on pins and needles, like, hope he's all right, hope she's all right. And then all of a sudden, they crawl out of a truck, and, you know, all right, good, you know. But you kind of go silent. There's that nervous, you know, usually about, you know, anywhere from two to five minutes where you just don't know, and it's nerve-wracking. The one thing I love about esports is when they crash, we get to make fun of it. Oh, that guy did a, a <laughs> five flips. I give it a ten. Like I think that's what's fun about esports is these crashes are crazy, and then we get to actually laugh and joke about it and like rate the crashes. Like to me, that's kind of fun because that is something we totally, absolutely never would even think about doing. I mean, the thought doesn't even cross our mind with real racing, you know. No, you're absolutely right. I can't remember who won. Uh, a lot of them kind of start blurring together. But when somebody won and Evan was like, yep, and he just put it into the fence to prove this is why he got first place or something like that. It's just you're never going to see a truck go right into the fence and, like, you laugh and joke like you were just saying. It's, it's awesome. Um, I will admit, though, on my side a little bit, at the first I was really, really nervous because – I'm just, you know, it's something new to me. I wanted to make sure everything was great. You know, it, it had your name on it. So I wanted to be a good representation of, of you and what you're trying to do. And then I'm sitting over here like sweating and I'm like, why am I more nervous sitting in my own house watching a virtual race happen in front of nobody, like in, in live, the live stands, you know, nobody can really see me. And I'm more nervous than I would be in front of, you know, 50,000 people in Crandon. It's yeah. just crazy. No, that is funny. Cause the same thing, like I, before our first event, I literally didn't sleep. I was sweating. I was nervous. I called into the, you know, our special call in thing with team speak, like an hour and a half early. Like I was nervous. Everything was going to go off. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like they go, Oh, do a 12 hour day at Crandon. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, 50,000 people live. And then, you know, six figures watching home. Oh, no big deal. You know what I mean? Like whatever, like, you know, but it was like this one, it was like, I was nervous, you know, by the third one, we we're having a good time and I didn't care, but um, you know, it was, it, it's like you said, it's something new. And I kind of like that though, being put out of my comfort zone, have to learn something new. Like I, I love that challenge. No, agreed. And anytime that, you know, when people, you probably hear it all the time, if you're nervous, then they're good nerves. That means you actually care about it. And it's something that's important to you. And so it's really exciting to see things and I can't wait to see it grow. You know, obviously the numbers were there and a lot of people had fun and a lot of real drivers, you know, real world crossover drivers, off-road drivers, like you said, were calling you like, Hey, I want to get in this. I want to do this. This is something that's cool. And so it's neat to see that some of your heroes, you know, like a, a Ron Taps, a Greg Biffle, you know, you could be able to race against them in a virtually, you know, made, not track, but because it exists, but a virtual world and, and, beat, and beat them. So it's cool. And we'll be back after this on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side -side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Big thanks to our guests today, R.J. Anderson, Tiffany Stone, for taking the time to call in. Thanks to all you listeners, whether it was uh, 
you know, on Dan Patrick Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 211, Sports Byline, American Forces Network, Down and Dirty Show.com, Podcast One, Spreaker, uh, Apple Podcasts. If it is an Apple Podcast uh, listener, please uh, head over there, smash the subscribe button, and uh, uh, leave a rating or review. And we're uh, continuing to try and pump up our online numbers. Um, but uh, thanks to all you guys for the continued support. Speaking of support, got to give a shout out to General Tire, reminding you anywhere as possible Polaris Razor, Vision Wheel, Rigid Industries, Dirtfish Auto. Optimus GSP XTV axles, iRacing. Don't forget coupon code PR Jim Beaver. That'll get you 50% off at iRacing. Save you a cool 50 bucks on that subscription plan. And uh, Dirtfish, it's Jim Beaver 15. That'll get you uh, 15% off any and all classes at Dirtfish Rally School. So hit them up and tell me, tell them I sent you. I am at Jim Beaver 15 on all forms of social media. For those of you that want to give me a follow, want to hit me up with fan questions like that segment we did today. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of fun with it. Love interacting with the fans. So uh, hit me up and uh, let me know what you guys are, are thinking or any guest suggestions, anybody you'd like to hear on the show. With that, we are going to sign off for this week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor.